share with you something from Psalm 73 tonight. I'm a Psalm kind of guy. And uh, our associate pastor, Richard Kevin, makes fun of me. He says I'm simple minded because I get more out of Psalms than anybody else, and that's probably true. <clears throat> but in Psalm 73, this is a psalm of uh, one of David's, uh, I guess you can call him like a choir director. His name is Asif, and he is a. Uh, Man, I love it in Psalm 73 because he bears his soul. And a lot of times I think that's what's wrong with the church is we kind of want to act like we're something we're not. Poor old Asif, he just kind of puts it out there where it is. And this is what he says in the first five verses of Psalm 73. He said, Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure at heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped and I had nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles and their bodies are healthy and strong. They're free from burdens that are common to man. They're not plagued by human evils. Therefore pride is their necklace and they clothe themselves with violence. I read one verse more than I said I was going to. But more always it was up. First he gives tribute to God. He said God's faithful. I know God's good to Israel. God's good to His people. God's always got His people. But He said, as for me, I wasn't so good back to God. I got in a place where I just about lost my faith. I just about slipped away. Not, not that God let go of Asaph. God will never do that. We'll see that in the psalm. But Asaph said, I was just barely holding on. I just barely had a toe in, man. I, I, I just was struggling so bad. Because I got to looking around and it seemed like everybody else had it a little easier to walk than me. I got to looking around and I started noticing that I sure would like to have the things those people got. I sure wish life was a little easier on my end. And he said, just to be honest, I, I started envying the wicked. Or let me put it another way. I started longing for the worldly things. I started hungering for the things of the world. I wasn't content with God like I was like I once was. I began to be hungry for the worldly things. And uh, man, you know Satan is so good at getting our eyes and our focus all crossed up. I like to farm while I drive. When I drive along, I farm, and my wife don't like me farming while I'm driving. Because I got this problem and I don't know how to fix it. When I look to the left, I always turn a hair to the right. And when I look to the right, I always turn a hair to the left. And I just can't hardly seem to get over. It scares her to death. I mean, and, and when my focus is straight ahead, I do pretty good, but I have a hard time keeping my focus straight ahead. And, I, and that's exactly what he's talking about. He said, I've got, I've got the looking out of my lane. I want you to think about that for a moment of life. Uh, so many times in life we get to, we start looking at, away from God and all of a sudden we got this major discontentment inside ourselves. Uh, we're going to study next Wednesday night in Psalm 38 in our church. And in Psalm 38, David talks about being ill. And if you read uh, commentary about Psalm 38, nobody can figure out if it's a all a psychological thing he's going to do if there's a physical thing too because David describes he's in torment he's in turmoil he is miserable he's hurting all over but the reality of it is is he's hurting because of his sin and if you've ever been there whenever as the when the Holy Spirit lives in you and you get out of step with the Holy Spirit man he can sure make you miserable he can make you feel like you hurting in places you didn't know you could hurt Amen. and poor old Asif said man I'm struggling I was hurt I got my eyes off God. It crossed me all up. I was really, really struggling. And this is what he says. I'm going to read verse 14 to 17 to you. It says, he said, verse 14, all day long I have been plagued. I have been punished every morning. If I had said I will speak thus, <clears throat> I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it was oppressive to me. Till I entered the sanctuary of God and I understood their final destiny. Now I want you to tell you what's going on here for a minute. 
asked him, said, I was miserable inside myself, man. God was wearing me out. I was, I was hurting. I was miserable. I was plagued. I, I, he, he said the word he used was punished. God was bringing about his, uh, what do you call it? Punishes those chastisement. God was chastising the ones he loves. And man, he was really lining me out. Man, I felt miserable. And this is what he said. He said, and I felt like if I would have told anybody outside of the faith, I, I, it would have looked so bad. Actually, the words he said is, I would have betrayed your children. You ever get in that place where you're, as a Christian, you're struggling in such ways, but you don't want to tell nobody? You know, I'm not. Hey. I know there's people out there in the radio well, I mean, at home in your living room bobbing your head up there. i got to tell you, the people in here are doing the same thing just so you know you can't see them. But, but we all get in that place, man. We get in a tough spot and we get to thinking things we all not think and struggling with. And, and the truth is our faith gets tried very much. I talk to people all the time that's in a real tough spot and man, their faith's getting tested and they begin to question things and they're scared to death to tell anybody that they're questioning things. They think they're weird or something. And actually, I say, no, you're just human. That's what you're dealing with. You've got two different natures going on. You were born with a fleshly nature. You was reborn with a spiritual nature. And you got a great big war going on inside of you right now. You're getting tried. And he, he said, when I tried to understand this, it was oppressive to me. Man, I can get that verse right there. Lord, have mercy. Trying to figure out what's going on inside my head can become very oppressive sometimes. And he said, I didn't get it. Listen to this part. I love this part. He said, I didn't get it till I went to your sanctuary. I tell you, I've told Mildred this before, and, and, and I feel it here. I feel it a lot of times in churches or revival settings, but it's almost like the Holy Spirit is in the room so much that you feel like you're standing on sacred ground. You just feel like you can reach out and touch God's hands. And what it is is when, when brothers and sisters are gathered together and they're praising the Lord's name. And he said, I didn't get it till I went into the house of the Lord, and all of a sudden I understand my faith. Now I want you to think about this. What would you eat for your last meal if you know it was your last meal? Well, I mean, it wouldn't matter to be my last meal. If I know I was going to eat another and I'd want to stay first or last or anywhere in the middle, it'd be all right for me. But I want you to think about this. If the worldly people usually pick the biggest thing on the menu in this life. But they're going to eat their fill in this life and starve to death for eternity. In other words, they have traded the greatest dish on the menu for the restaurant. You understand? They're going to eat for a lifetime. And we're going to eat for eternity. And he said, all of a sudden I got it. I walked in and I felt the presence of the Lord and I got it. I've been longing for something that would last a moment and God's gave me something that will never fade. All of a sudden, it made sense to me. I realized, God, you haven't shortchanged me. Everything I have is in your hands. And so I want you, I want to read these verses to you. Psalm 73, 21, and I'm going to read the 26. Listen to these verses because, man, this right here, I believe he must know me. It says, When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a bruised beast before you. Yet I am always with you. You hold me in your right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me in the glory. I love that part. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire but you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion. Now I want, to think, I want you to just think about this verse for a minute right here. Just, just put yourself in this verse. He said, when my heart was grieved, and my spirit was embittered. I became senseless and ignorant, and I was like dealing with a brute beast. The other day, me and Emma was trying to get this old bull and calf in the shoot. We was trying to have him, he didn't hardly get that. He wanted to fight. And then when we got him turned around where he couldn't push forward, he wanted to back up. Like I never got it. I mean, he was pushing backwards with all he had, and I was pushing forward with all I had in there for a minute. He could have went either way. I didn't know how it was going to go. We got rough. You know what? That's kind of the way it is with God sometimes, ain't it? He's doing everything in His power to help us, and we're pushing the opposite direction with everything we got because we just don't understand. Amen. 
And he said, you know, that's the way I was. I, I, I was so frustrated and I was so in, filled with frustration, anger, and bitterness that I didn't realize I was fighting the hand that was guiding me. But here's the cool thing. He said, but you know what? God never left me. He was always right there. He never did say, okay, you big dummy. Forget it. If you want to push that way, I'll just let, let's do it. Just, you know, he never gave up. He just kept holding on. He goes on to say this right here. I love this part right here. He said, you guide me with your counsel. And afterwards, you'll take me in the glory. And that's so hard for me to understand sometimes because I can only see a short distance. And God can see all the way to the other side. And He's trying to guide somebody that can't see past the end of their nose. And it's a little bit difficult to do. But the reality is, is His destination He's got in mind is way bigger than anything I can understand. You see, He's guiding me in the glory. And I am so interested in instant gratification. I like to feel good. I'm a cushy kind of a guy, you know what I mean? And, and, and most of us are, you know what I mean? I mean, like, I like being in my recliner with a cold Pepsi and the remote, you know what I mean? That's kind of my kind of... I'm a cushy guy, and, 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 and I'll just be honest with you. I've been writing a message on being Jesus strong, and I believe Although I am so blessed to live in this country, that us in this country have an element to fight that a lot of people don't have. Life has made us soft. Yes, it's made us pretty soft. Yes, and it carries over into our spiritual life because the moment things get a little tough, we want to sit down and whine. Because we ain't too used to tough. But anyways, I'm just going to preach to me here for a minute. When life gets a little tough, I want to sit down and whine. I don't want to stand, and so I want to push backwards like some kind of unintelligent beast that's fighting the wrong direction. But you know what? God's got a final destination in mind, and here's the cool thing for a Christian. I want you to think about this tonight. I don't know why I want to say this, but I do. For the longest time, I had a religion with no relationship. I had a church membership, I wouldn't say it. And I was trying so hard to be good enough to go to heaven, and every day of my life I know that I'm never gonna make it. And and I got saved. And when I got saved, I believe I struggled more for the first little while than I did before I got saved. Not very many people will tell you that, but man, I was telling you what, I was a mess. I was trying so hard to be good and everything I set out to do, I'd fall on my face. I I was and I and I tell you what, I've been saved for twenty some years, I've been pastoring the church for twenty years, and I'm still struggling. <laughs> I'll just be honest, I, I'm a still a struggling a little bit. I bet some days a lot. But here's the thing. I'm not living to try to go to heaven anymore. I'm living like I know I'm going to go. Because He didn't say, if you do good, I'll write your name down. He said, if you trust Me, Amen. for whosoever shall. You know, it, it's His job to clean me up and He's working on that. Yeah. It's my job to let Him. Yeah. Poor Waffles. Asif said, I realized I was fighting the God who was preparing me for glory. And if tonight you kind of got your eyes on the worldly side a little bit, sometimes I tell you what, my pride gets in the way and I ain't too satisfied with my lot. You know what I mean? We do that. Yep. And sometimes envy gets in my way and I kind of think, man, I ought to have what that guy's got. You know what I mean? I've been watching a lot of hunting shows lately because it's just that kind of year. It falls in the air driving my wife and kids crazy. And every time I watch a hunting show, I want a gun like that guy's got or a scope like that guy's got. Or, man, i got to get me one of them things. You know what I mean? Man, if I had that right there. And the reality is, if I had that, I'd want a different one. That's just been the whole reality. You know, it gets in the way and that lust gets in the way. The Bible says the Lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life are the three things that stand in man's way. Maybe tonight you're kind of embittered inside and you don't understand exactly why you are in the shape you are right now. You don't understand why you got to go through what you got to go through. And maybe you're kind of like ass if you're kind of looking around and envying the world a little bit and you're scared to tell anybody that and start to question your faith. But I want you to remember this. God's got greater plans than you. 
we want to be confident for a moment. He wants to prepare us for an eternal glory. Amen. And uh, so hold on to his hand. Because he's certainly going to hold on to yours. Amen. If you're out there tonight and you're just afraid to match, Phil, I say, I'm at, I'm, I'm at wit's end. I don't know where to go from here. I want to challenge you to do something. I want to challenge you to get real with God. Because I tell people this all the time. Most people want to pray and they want to tell God what God wants to hear instead of what they need to tell Him. Most people transform into a real religious person during their prayers. When the reality is, is their life's a mess. So if your life's a mess, you just get real with God and say, God, i got a mess. And I can't fix it. But I'm asking you that. And if you're discontent, I want you to be honest with God about it. And if you've lost your joy, I want you to be honest with God. David said, Lord, return to me the joy of my salvation. And David said, why so downcast, O my soul? Why so downcast within me? In other words, he said, boy, get your head up. You ain't got no reason to be going around like this. What's the matter with you? David talked to himself. And so maybe you need to encourage yourself a little bit. But whatever you need to do, whatever the Holy Spirit's laid on your heart, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict you. And your job is to respond. And so if He's laid something on your heart that you need to lay down, or He's opened your eyes to something that you really need to just be honest with God about, I want you to do that. And if you bow with me, I want to pray one more time. Lord Jesus, I just ask you to be with everybody out there listening tonight. I don't know why I come here with this on my heart or mind. Probably more for me than anybody else, and that's good too. But Lord, if there's somebody struggling and hurting, if there's somebody that's trying to pack something they ain't equipped to pack, I pray they realize, Lord, that they don't have to by themselves. Because that's what you come to do to set us free. Lord, I just pray for all of us out there tonight that we might realize we're not created to be self-sufficient. We was created to need You. And You are the great I Am. You are the sufficient God. Lord, help us to trust our heart and our mind to You tonight. Bless the exercise of this service as we go along. Forgive us, God, now. Lead us Your way. In Jesus' name, Amen.